Y Talk 6. I hope you enjoyed our last program and checked out the work of the amazing musicians from the Northeast Indian region that we were in conversation with last week. I also hope that you are using this lockdown to your advantage as far as possible. Keep your comments and keep your suggestions coming. It has really helped us curate this section for you. Today, we are going to unpack the economic package announced by the Prime Minister. Many of you wrote to us saying that you wanted a breakdown of the package so that it is comprehensible to the youngsters out there. In this program, we shall try and do exactly that. Now that the television debates and the dust around that has settled down, let's see what this package has in store for the various components of our economy. But before we do that, let me introduce my colleagues for the day. We'll have Rajat with the update and the tete -tet section. Rajat works um, on economic matters. He is a panelist with various media houses and also serves the Manipur government. Um, we have Hamsa with us with the regular shout out section and we'll have Soumya to take the tension out of the package, the lockdown, the migrant crisis and introduce to us some interesting movie for the day. Over to you, Rajat. Thank you, Subhrasta. Uh, we are very glad to have with us uh, Jayan Sinhaji. Uh, Jayan Sinhaji, as we all know, is a, is a savvy politician and a, a very accomplished politician uh, hailing from Hazaribagh, Jharkhand. Uh, Jayanji has is also currently serving as a chairperson of the Parliamentary Finance Committee and is also the member of the Public Accounts Committee. Um, as we all know, other than uh, being a savvy politician, Jayanji has had a very long and illustrious uh, career that uh, some of our young friends, uh, once they get to know, would be pretty, uh, you know, enthused about and 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 would consider Jayanji as one of uh, uh, the role models. Uh, just to just to highlight that uh, Jayanji is uh, is a graduate from IIT and from Harvard University. He has uh, long served as a management consultant with McKinsey, with Omidya Network, and has also been an active fund manager till he started his uh, political innings and has served as the Minister of State for Finance uh, in the Government of India from 2014 till 17, and thereafter as a Civil Aviation Minister. Uh, who, and he was the one who was leading the Uran scheme uh, for for India. So thank you so much, Jayanji, uh, for for giving giving your time and sharing your insights on on how uh, uh, how are we uh, the youngsters of this country looking up to uh, the economic package that was announced by first the Prime Minister and then laid out in detail by the Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaramanji. So I just wanted to gather your initial thoughts. To how do you see this package? Uh, what are some of the uh, fine friends uh, that you would want uh, the young India to know about? Well, thank you very much, Rajat, and uh, thank you for giving me the opportunity uh, to be able to uh, speak to uh, the young people of India through this channel. Uh, and I think you're asking one of the most important questions that we're dealing with right now, which is uh, uh, the government's uh, economic package and how is that going to help the economy? How is that going to help uh, the lives and careers of young people across India? Now, uh, before I get into the economic package, it's important to understand where we are in the pandemic. Uh, and as I have described it, we are just at the end of the beginning. With the lockdown ending, we are just at the end of the beginning. We still have a very long way to go. Uh, best estimates are right now that a cure is, uh, you know, four to six months away, uh, which will bring down hospitalization and uh, mortality rates. And a vaccine, uh, which will be rolled out at scale, and which will uh, be used to immunize people uh, across uh, the world, which is 7 billion people, perhaps requiring two doses, which means 14 billion doses. That is probably somewhere between 18 to 24 months away. So it is the end of the beginning. Uh, we've got ready. We've had a very successful lockdown uh, and the Honorable Prime Minister has to be complimented for acting very proactively when we had only about 500 cases in India. Uh, we imposed a very uh, a stringent lockdown, which was necessary because it's bought us time. Uh, and that is very, very important because the time that we have gained because 
of this lockdown has enabled us, number one, uh, to be able to put in place all the medical resources, uh, all of the preparation that's required to deal with the pandemic. Number two, it's raised awareness among people. So everybody knows about do gaj ki duri, face mask, face cover, as well as hand washing. Sab log jagruk ho gaye is prakar se. And the third thing that it has done, which is also very important, which is not fully understood, uh, is that it has uh, pushed out the surge in India. We are only at about 100,000 cases right now. It's pushed out the surge uh, much further out, and that has bought us time relative to drugs uh, and cures. Now, some people have done some modeling and said that uh, right now we are at 100,000 cases, but if we not had the lockdown, we would have been more than 4 million cases at this stage. So that's the kind of incredible impact we've had uh, on the disease burden on human lives uh, by having the lockdown. But as I said, this is a long process and we have to think about it that way. Now, with that as the context, with that as the disease management approach, uh, what the government has done through the economic package is basically address two very important uh, objectives. On the one hand, we've had to deal with relief measures. And I will just go through that in some detail. And then on the other, we have gone through with reform or revival measures. So in equal, uh, you know, sort of balanced way, in an equal way, both relief and reform and revival have been tackled. Now, very quickly, I'll go through that and then maybe we can follow up on elements of this, uh, Rajat. But as far as relief is concerned, what the government has done is clearly identify what the vulnerable groups are. And these are, of course, the rural poor, the urban poor, MSME, the financial system and corporates. These important stakeholders in our economy, they have been provided relief of various kinds, whether it's food, whether it's cash transfer, credit, ensuring that credit markets work properly, uh, giving uh, support to the states. In each of these different and important ways, we have provided uh, very abundant relief to people that need it. Then coming to the reform revival part, there we have several very game-changing uh, initiatives that have been uh, taken forward. Number one being, of course, agriculture, where people are saying this is a 1991 type liberalization for agriculture. Tremendous, tremendous uh, steps taken there. The One Nation, One Ration Card, which was in the works, but which has been massively accelerated so that people can get access to food grains wherever. Defense production, FDI and defense production has been increased to 74%. Uh, Again, a very game-changing reform. Coal and mining in general has been opened up dramatically. That's a very major reform. And there are several others uh, that have been undertaken as well, uh, changing the definition of MSMEs to make them uh, completely consistent and up to 100 crores. That's another very major reform step that's been undertaken. So Rajat, whether you look at it in terms of relief, as well as in terms of reform and revival, the government has really taken this crisis that we are facing and converted it into an opportunity that will enable us to build, as the Honorable Prime Minister said, a very resilient, forward-looking India. So uh, that's a great insight into, uh, into how the, the package has been structured. So of course, uh, what I infer from your uh, perspective is that, that there is significant amount of push which has been given on the demand side, as well as addressing uh, certain uh, medium-term and long-term uh, reforms uh, uh, which, which we've been waiting for a very long time. So I think uh, what Prime Minister and the SM have done, they've done a very nice balancing act between the two. Uh, though uh, the uh, few people, few commentators have been saying that the demand side is, uh, is, is, is a little less. Do you see that, uh, uh, you know, I mean, significant amount is done. And so far, if you see, uh, for instance, the Mandriga related allocation, they've gone above one lakh crores. How do you see this playing out? and satisfying the demand side of, of our economy? So the question that has been asked by many people and several very reputed economists uh, have said that it was important to have cash transfers, uh, money going directly into people's bank accounts. That's exactly what has happened, Raja. I've done a quick calculation. If you take rural families, uh, rural families, uh, let's say about nine crore uh, farmer families in India, now, with the harvest itself, and we made sure that the rabi crop was harvested properly, uh, people were given uh, the prices that they should have gotten, about 75,000 crores has gone through the rabi crop, the, wow. uh, the purchase of the rabi crop. Then 19,000 crores uh, has been front-loaded as the Kisan Samman Niti. So that's gone in as well. 
Then in addition to that, we have 6,000 crores that gone in as the Fasal Bima Yojana. Then people have got through Jandhan accounts, women have got 1,500 rupees, 500 rupees a month. In addition, uh, we have pension payments of 1,000 rupees that have gone in. And then finally, in terms of support, this is all from the central government, uh, we have also provided them, as you pointed out, uh, 1 lakh crores for Narega. So anybody who wants to work uh, in rural areas can work in rural areas. My quick calculation tells me that rural families, rural families uh, in these uh, 60 days, let's say, of the lockdown or so, have got into the bank, bank accounts more than 12, 13,000 rupees. This is direct cash that's gone directly into people's bank accounts. Again, it's Narega, it's Jandhan, it's the Kisan Saman Nidhi, it's the payment from the harvest. You add all that up immediately into people's bank account. And of course, you know, we have to uh, once again highlight here that it is because of the reform measures in the past, the DBT, etc., uh, that has enabled us to be able to send this money without leakage immediately and directly into people's bank accounts. And don't forget Jandhan itself, which was one of the signature achievements of uh, you know the, the the NDA government in its first term uh, was one that enabled universalization of bank accounts. So we went from about 55 people have percent of the people having bank accounts to 100 percent of people having bank accounts. That enabled us to do this kind of cash transfer. So I think as far as demand stimulus is concerned, as far as cash uh, into rural families are concerned, that's been done brilliantly well. Now let's come to the urban side. In the urban side again, the benefit of the pension scheme. The benefit of the Jandhan scheme uh, has happened. Uh, we have provided a tremendous amount of uh, food support to everyone as well. And then finally, uh, what has happened is that uh, the MSMEs have got 3 lakh crores. So MSMEs can get back to business and pay uh, their workers, many of whom are informal urban poor workers. They have been able to get their salaries. They have been able to get cash payments as well. So all of this has been done. Now, Rajat, importantly, remember, this is only the central government. The state governments in some ways are spending equally as much. So again, when we look at demand stimulus, cash going into people's bank accounts, there's what the central government is doing and what the state government is doing. In combination, the cash going into people's accounts is very, very substantial. And then the final point I'll make, which uh, many uh, economists don't appropriately take into account, but they must, is that when we compare what's happening in India to what's happening around the world, Around the world, there is no massive food distribution program, right? But through the food distribution program, both for the urban poor and the rural poor, somewhere between 500 to 1,000 rupees worth of food grains, and of course, we've added dal to it now as well, uh, this is going to people, and this is going directly to them as well. So this is another example of where, whether it's demand stimulus, whether it's support for vulnerable groups, whether it's relief, whatever term you want to call it, uh, we have provided very direct, very substantial, very material support to vulnerable sections of society. And I'll conclude this point by saying this was the first priority of the government. The lockdown was implemented March 25th. These announcements were made on March 27th by the Honorable Finance Minister. So we recognized how important it was to provide support, and we have done so. I think, uh, Renzi, you've raised certain very important points because I feel that there was some amount of confusion that was uh, created uh, when people said that there were no visible direct transfers. But what you are highlighting is, is essentially that uh, 12 to 13,000 rupees directly or indirectly have reached to the poor and vulnerable sections of our society. So that's a very important point. In uh, rural areas. Rajat, yeah, that's right. Rajat in rural areas. In rural areas. But that's where the bulk is, and even a lot of the Pravasi Mazdoor, the, the migrant workers who are heading back, uh, they have families in rural areas, right? And their families in rural areas are being supported in this very direct way. Right. So, uh, just building on that migrant question, uh, I suppose a big reform that has been announced is One Nation, One Russian Guard. Uh, and that will, uh, will allow these migrants to come back to cities and not worry about the immediate concerns on food security. So how do you see that planning out and, and, and how does this address, along with the other measures that have been taken, address the vulnerable migrant section, the circular migrants of our country? Yeah, that's a very serious and important issue, Rajat. And uh, as a Lok Sabha MP uh, with 20 lakh, 25 lakh people in my constituency, uh, this is a problem at a personal and human level that I deal with continuously every day, all the time. Just this morning, I did a series of Zoom calls with quarantine centers 
uh, in uh, Chopparan and Bari uh, in my constituency. And we literally are talking to people who are coming back from Maharashtra, coming back from Delhi, who are quarantined right now. So this is something where I know directly from the ground level what's happening. In addition, I put out uh, you know an online form and I asked people to fill it up uh, if they wanted to come back to Hazaribagh. 60,000 people filled it up and I talk to them all the time, Rajat. So I really have a good sense uh, of why this has happened and you know why are people frustrated, why are they upset and uh, you know what, uh, what the government is doing. So what's happening here, Rajat, is that most people are complimenting the government on the fact that they have not had any trouble with respect to food or shelter. So in the cities, uh, they have got food and shelter and they've generally been taken care of. What they are dealing with right now are two factors, which we have to recognize. These are human issues, and it's uh, it's uh, it's very distressing to hear the, you know the suffering that uh, they're going through. On the one hand, uh, because of the uncertainty around the pandemic and so on, they have actually not been paid for a couple of months. So they are now starting to feel like there's no visibility on their income in the city. I spoke to somebody who was staying in a hotel restaurant. Uh, just uh, outside of uh, CST in uh, Victoria Terminus uh, in uh, Bombay. And he said, I have been in Bombay for 22 years. But my owner has told me, my Malik has told me, that this pandemic, I can't tell you when I can give you a chance. So they told me that Vijay Yadav was his name. They told me that when I have been in Bombay for 22 years, now I feel that my life has changed. कि मेरी कमर टूट गई है मुझे वापस जाना पड़ेगा क्योंकि अगर मैं यहाँ कमा नहीं सकता हूँ मुझे ऐसे ही रहना पड़ेगा खाने की कोई कमी नहीं लेकिन रेस्टोरेंट बंद पड़ा हुआ है मैं कितने दिन ऐसे रह सकता हूँ सो वन इज दैट दे जनरली डोंट हैव विजिबिलिटी ऑन अर्निंग्स देयरफॉर दे डेफिनेटली वॉन्ट टू गो बैक टू दिलेज एंड बी विद फैमिलीज द नंबर टू इशू इज दे आर वेरी वरिड एंड पर्टिकुलरली इन मुंबई आउट ऑफ माई सिक्सटी थाउजेंड पीपल ट्वेंटी थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी टू थाउजेंड पीपल आर इन मुंबई In Mumbai, of course, the pandemic has spread. It's one third of all the cases in India. People are worried about their health and they want to go and shelter in a safe place. So it's this combination of not having any income and not having any visibility on income. And second, uh, the worry with the pandemic that is impelling them to go home. And this is completely understandable. And that is why what our government has done is to say, we will run the trains, we will provide the support. Uh, if you want to go back, please go back. Be with your families. We will support you all the way. Yeah, no, that's. Uh, I think these politicians like you are are having such an empathetic uh, watch on the migrants from your constituencies. And if all of the other politicians are also working like this, then it will certainly ease out some of the pressures that the migrants are facing because of their immediate either the health concern or the livelihood concern. So that's that's a great insight. Uh, Jayanti, one more point, uh, and this would be our final question. This is pertaining to some of our younger audience. Um, when I graduated from IIT, I landed up right at the heart of the global financial crisis that was in 2008-9. Um, and, and I see that a lot of uh, friends uh, and juniors from colleges who are graduating from, from, from across the country are now equally worried what will happen to some of the uh, free placement offers that they had some of the jobs uh, that they have been looking for for the past uh, few months. How do how should they uh, look at this crisis? Because they have read commentaries that this crisis might go on for like three, four, or even five years, uh, for that matter of fact. Um, you would have seen a lot of uh, uh, economic crises during your long uh, uh, business career that you uh, that you have so nicely flourished at. Uh, what are the big learnings uh, about crisis in general that you would want to share with our audience? So Rajat, this is a great question. I'm very glad you've asked me this question uh, because I've been writing extensively on this set of issues. Uh, and in fact, publishers have got in touch with me and, uh, and said to me, why don't you write a book about this? And, you know, I'm seriously thinking about it. And it's largely because I want to help young people. You know, my own kids are pretty young. My younger one is 19. The older one is 30. Uh, and they have their careers ahead of them. And, you know, I really do want to help you all, your generation, uh, understand what it means. I'm 57 years old now, Rajat, and I graduated in 1985, uh, as you know, from IIT Delhi. And of course, uh, people of my age at that time all used to go to the US, so I did that, of course. And I went to the University of Pennsylvania to do my master's degree at that time. Uh, but as a result of that, you know, being 57 and having graduated from IIT now 35 years ago, uh, and seen my cohort and seen also the global economy 
go through a lot of ups and downs. I've learned a few things and I've got the scar tissue to deal with that. Uh, I'll remind you that, you know, uh, we've had the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989. Then, of course, we had uh, the dot-com crisis and 9-11, which happened in 2000, 2001. Uh, then we had the global financial crisis that you alluded to in 2008 and 9. And now we have the uh, coronavirus pandemic. The reality, Rajat, is that we have to prepare ourselves uh, for a life, a career, a world, which will have ups and downs, which will have black swan events. Uh, and we therefore have to recognize that not everything is within our control. And we have to really prepare ourselves and be resilient, as the Honorable Prime Minister wants to make India resilient. India cannot be resilient if, unless our people, particularly our most talented people, are resilient. And we will have to be resilient because the ups and downs will happen. I myself, as I said, have seen four of these ups and downs uh, in a 35-year career. So roughly once every 10 years, you see something like this. You have to be prepared for that. Now, sometimes it can happen uh, when you're well, pre well prepared, well established, well settled, and you can get through that. Sometimes it happens like it happened for you, Rajat, when you graduated in the middle of the global financial crisis. And those are difficult times. Uh, I want to be honest with you. Uh, those are difficult times. But uh, at some level, all of us will still do well. Uh, there may be uh, situations where you may not get exactly the job that you want, but keep your skills current, keep your skills fresh, uh, keep at it, be resilient, build your networks, and you will get through it. Uh, and I frankly don't worry about, you know, uh, uh, most talented young people who have got good educations and you know, who have uh, you know, uh, been very successful in their lives. I worry more about people who have not got such a good education and for whom something like this is a very big shock and something that sets them back a lot. So not just our, uh, you know, our, our, our friends and so on from the IITs, Rajat, uh, but everybody. Uh, we, uh, we really need to uh, convince people uh, that there is a way to be resilient with respect to uh, people's careers and people's emotional lives as well. And that is all about uh, building your skills, all about having a good mental attitude, uh, having an ability to be optimistic, uh, and having the support of your family and friends. Uh, so these are the kinds of things you have to have in place uh, to be able to get through the ups and downs. But the reality, Rajat, is it doesn't matter when you graduate, what type of job you get, everybody is going to have to deal uh, with these ups and downs, uh, with these ebbs and flows, uh, as far as one's personal career is concerned. Uh, so we just have to prepare ourselves. And, uh, you know, uh, as I said, uh, friends and family, you know, emotional strength, fortitude, uh, and making sure that professionally our skills are always current and, and fresh. I think that's a, that's a great message that should stay with all of us, that one has to uh, look that there will be light at the end of the tunnel and the tunnel is not long enough, uh, hopefully. And uh, uh, with that, thank you so much uh, for taking out, taking out time and sharing your insights about the economic package which the Prime Minister and the FM had announced a few days back. Thanks again. Thanks for your time, Jayanti. It was wonderful speaking to you. Over to you, Shivrasa. Thank you, Rajat. That was uh, indeed a very interesting conversation. And I hope that the youngsters out there have not only understood what the package is all about, but are also trying to make up their mind which sector of the economy they want to contribute to. This takes me to our next section, that is the movie review section. Over to you, Soumya. Hello, everyone. In times of distress, we look out for relief. For instance, Directly or indirectly, we were all looking out for the economic relief discussed in the previous segment. Likewise, amidst all the anxieties, troubling news and the negative narratives, we seek some mental relief too. And what better than humor? In today's segment, I want to share with you two of my favorite Indian movies and these both are political satires. The first is Tere Bin Laden. This 2010 movie, largely shot in India, is about a young Pakistani reporter who desperately wants to migrate to United States and for this, he makes a fake video using the look-alike of Osama bin Laden. Since the plot is situated in the aftermath of 9-11 attacks, you can imagine what follows for the reporter and the look-alike. The two leads are played by Ali Zafar, a Pakistani actor, and Pradhuman Singh, an Indian actor. Interestingly, 
for taking a dig against America's war on terror and the post 9/11 realities, the movie was banned in Pakistan and in the United States. On a side note, look up for the reason that Pakistani government gave for banning the movie. The second movie is Weldon Abba. This 2009 movie was directed by Shyam Benegal and has stalwarts like Bhooman Irani and Manisha Lamba playing the lead characters. In a very interesting mix of subplots, this movie is essentially about the drought-like situation in a village near Hyderabad and what the protagonist does to get the administration to build a well or a kuwa to draw water. When they see corruption and red tapeism delaying their demand, they use their wit which ultimately results in a police complaint that the well has been stolen. Now what follows is a comic roller coaster of events. This movie based on three short stories and remake of a Marathi movie won the National Film Awards for Best Film on Social Issues in 2009. Now despite being very different from one another, both the movies have a few similarities. While both the movies are in Hindi, they both have employed significant use of regional accents. Now I could not identify the different accents in Tere Bin Laden, but the Hyderabadi accent in Weldon Abba definitely adds to the charm of the movie. In the past couple of years, comedy as a genre has become filled with either abuses, vulgarity or pre-recorded laugh tracks. However, both these movies, despite minor exaggerations, are clean intelligent and are not insulting or humiliating you can comfortably watch it with your family friends or even your boss i hope you pick them up and enjoy watching these two thank you somya that was a much needed cheer in these dark depressing times i hope you enjoy the movies that we have been recommending to you and please keep your suggestions pouring this takes me to the last segment which is the shout out segment over to you hamsa Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we shout out for two initiatives, one from Bihar and another from Chennai, both for their efforts to help and support stranded migrant workers across India. First, we have Sridharan from Inspirations Public Charitable Trust in Chennai. Sridharan, to keep our corona warriors safe and secure, has distributed face masks, hand sanitizers, hand gloves, phenyl bottles to police, municipal workers, doctors, nurses, wardens and also to army personnel. They've also been distributing ration to stranded migrant workers residing in and around Chennai. Let's have a look at what they do. Hi, this is Sridharan from Inspirations. We have been working on COVID since the lockdown has been announced. And we have been focusing mainly on the security of the nation and the welfare of the people. By saying this, we have been distributing face mask, hand sanitizer, uh, phenyl bottles, uh, hand gloves to the police corporation workers, uh, to the hospital uh, doctors, nurses, wardens, and even to that matter, we have uh, given it to the army. The recent uh, activity is we have been supplying food provisions to the migrant workers. Tamil Nadu holds about 8 crore people, out of which Chennai alone holds 10 percentage of the population which is around roughly around 80 to 85 lakhs out of which to our gut feeling the migrant workers from different parts of the world should be something around 10 percentage of that which is roughly about 8 lakh people from different parts of the India so most of them are Biharis and many are there so we see people stranded on across the area without food and we we have been keep on getting a lot of calls from different parts of the city requesting for food so with our team our team comprises of ncc cadets and other volunteers and i being an ncc cadet we have a team of dedicated and patriotic people with us we get a lot of calls from different ngos and organizations asking for food and provisions to be supported for the migrant workers. We look forward for your support to serve them better. Thanks for the opportunity. Congratulations and thank you for the timely efforts, Sridharan, feeding the hungry migrant workers during these tough times. I'm sure you've accumulated a lot of blessings. 
thank you for joining us today welcome and thank you very much for giving us an opportunity thank you so much next we have with us abhishek ranjan from bihar welcome to white talks abhishek thank you thank you very much abhishek along with a few youngsters in bihar got together to help bihari migrant workers stranded around india and they did this by creating a twitter handle called friends of bihar through which they could reach out and help many stranded workers across within the first week of the lockdown itself 25 batches of migrant workers have been assisted through abhishek and his team now after the lockdown has been eased out abhishek and his team are assisting migrant workers in returning back to bihar and they also plan to assist in creating employment to the returned workers let's see glimpses of what they are doing गाइस है जो हम लोग गाँव से बिहार से आए हुए हैं और यहाँ पे आकर के रोज का छोटा मोटा कारोबार वाले आदमी है यहाँ आके जब से डाउनलोड लॉट हुआ है तब से हम लोग फंस गए जब तक थे दो चार रुपये कमा करके खर्च कर दिए और अभी तक का कोई पूछने वाला नहीं कोई ताशने वाला नहीं हम सोचते हैं जो कि सरकार से कुछ ना कुछ हम लोग को सहायता मिले यहाँ तक के नहीं ऐसे मिले तो हमको गाँव जाने आने वाला हूँ हम लोग केरला में काम करते हैं अभी जब से यह लॉकडाउन हुआ है हम लोग 18 आदमी रूम में हैं काम पे नहीं जाते हैं इसलिए हम लोगों का खाना पीना सब बिल्कुल खत्म हो गया दो दिन से हम लोग कोई बिस्किट कोई shout out to you and your team abhishek great efforts in thank helping the needy migrant workers congratulations and thank you for joining us today thank you again thank you friends those were two young individuals with their teams helping and assisting migrant workers in their struggle against the virus stay tuned with us for more such heartwarming stories thank you hamsa thank you for bringing out that inspirational story from the two parts of this country i hope you keep sharing your uh, interesting stories from around your region and do let us know who do you want to see being featured in the next shout out section this takes us to the end of this program thank you for staying with us i hope you enjoyed the program do subscribe to our youtube channel where we keep bringing to you curated content for you by you as i keep saying this is your platform this is a platform where we try to bring whatever you want to watch we also try to bring stories that you want us to air we also want to introduce movies that you would like to watch books that you would want to read and anything that the youngsters of this country are thinking and debating about keep in touch keep writing to us follow us on social media and do subscribe thank you